Coming up, it's the largest stretch of undeveloped shoreline in Florida. 24 miles of natural beach hosting 4,000 sea turtle nests each year. Right next door is one of the nation's most spectacular birding locations with 140,000 acres of preserved coastal marsh habitat. We're going there next on Wildlife Matters. This program is made possible by the following generous contributors. Florida is a beautiful state and home to a tremendous diversity of native wildlife. In fact, Florida is the third most ecologically diverse state in the country. But never has there been a time in history when wildlife in Florida have suffered more. Coastal sea turtles and shorebirds are losing huge amounts of habitat from development along beaches and adjacent uplands. Wading and migratory birds lose acres of habitat daily as wetlands and marshes are drained for development and polluted by pesticides, herbicides, and other chemicals and compounds. The good news is there are people and organizations doing the vital job of preserving undeveloped land for wildlife here in Florida. Today we'll visit two coastal treasures where large tracts of natural Florida are being conserved in Brevard and Volusia counties for the good of wildlife and the people that come to see them, the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge and Canaveral National Seashore. I hope you enjoy learning about these two fabulous natural areas and you'll be inspired to do whatever you can as they have to save space for our irreplaceable native wildlife. Wildlife species require large expanses of undisturbed natural land in order to find enough food, water, and shelter to stay alive. So with today's rapid development here in Florida, it's more important than ever to share Florida's land with native wildlife that were here long before we were. In the central region of Florida, along 35 miles of Atlantic coast, lie two very important wildlife conservation areas, the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge and the Canaveral National Seashore. Both of these important wildlife areas are owned by NASA, but managed by the Department of the Interior and located within the Kennedy Space Center. They're easily accessible from Route 50, 528, otherwise known as the Beach Line, and I-95. We begin our program at the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge, 140,000 acres of critical wading bird and migratory bird habitat. Each winter, freezing temperatures in the north cause the southward migration of millions of waterfowl, shorebirds, marsh birds, raptors, and songbirds. Many of these migrating birds find refuge here in Merritt Island. The Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge is a a really important area for wildlife. It, its location on the, on the Atlantic Flyway, which is a, a, a route that migratory birds use for, have been using for thousands and thousands of years. Merritt Island is located on this major flyway uh, that's used for birds during the winter uh, migration and the spring migration when they turn back to the North America. It's also located between the um, temperate areas to the north and the subtropical areas to the south. And so these two overlapping zones um, kind of uh, form here uh, on, on the Cape area. And, um, and so it, we attract birds and other wildlife species from the north and the south. This broad, flat expanse of habitats such as salt marsh, pine flatwood, and scrub hosts over 500 species of wildlife, many of which are federally listed as endangered or threatened. There's about a dozen different species of federally endangered or threatened species, species like manatees. Uh, the bald eagle has been on the list for many years and has just come off. The species like peregrine falcons. 
uh, uh, the wood stork, scrub jays, uh, are just a few of the bird species. We also have three different species of sea turtles, uh, leatherback turtles, green turtles, loggerhead sea turtles that nest along our coastline. The indigo snake which is a federally threatened species. The Atlantic salt marsh snake is another federally uh, listed species. So there's a, altogether there's about a dozen different federally listed species that are found here. Scrub jays are spunky blue, white, and black birds that look a lot like the familiar blue jay, but without the crest on their head or white wing spots. Scrub jays are having problems surviving because they're rapidly losing their habitat. They can only live in high, well-drained, sandy, scrubby habitat, which is prime for residential and commercial development. Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge has one of the best populations of scrub jays left in Florida, with over 500 families. These birds are a prize to see for bird watchers. Natural salt marshes such as this have all but disappeared from Florida's east coast. But because of the vision and bravery of everyday people like you and me who cared about wildlife, this large expanse of wetland has been spared. Uh, Alan Cruikshank is a name that's often used, and Alan Cruikshank was um, a, a naturalist, a filmmaker, uh, and he worked for um, National Audubon Society, and he was making films, and uh, natural history films, and and, um, and lived in the area, knew the value of this area for birds, and him and other individuals lobbied uh, with NASA and suggested that they could turn this unused portions of this very, very large complex that NASA had acquired over to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for our management. And in 1963, um, we entered, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service entered into an agreement that allowed, uh, that established this refuge. The Rosiette Spoonbill is one of the listed species not common everywhere in the state, but found at the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. Their bright pink bodies and flat, spoon-like bills clearly identify them from other long-legged wading birds. Spoonbills find food by moving their bills back and forth in the water. When they feel food touching their bill, it instantly closes. today? Well, just looking for birds of different kinds and hoping to see some spoonbills and maybe some alligators. It's our first trip and they're whatever, yeah. third or fourth? Yeah, so. probably third or fourth. And uh, you just see large groupings of birds and you see a lot of variety of birds here that you don't see other places, at least not where we come from. The refuge attracts lots of people. Um, with, with its location, you know, close to the Orlando metropolitan area, and um, lots of people using the refuge for a variety of things. And bird watching and wildlife viewing is, is our primary use. And we are located on Black Point Wildlife Drive right now, and, and it's probably our most popular facility. There's roughly, oh, uh, 500,000 visitors that will come out and, and use the Black Point Wildlife Drive in the winter time. The refuge also has a number of um, hiking trails. We have six hiking trails. Um, and other um, wildlife viewing areas um, such as this and wildlife blinds that we have and, and other trails along the wildlife drive. We also have um, uh, fishing is another big use. Mesquite Lagoon has a reputation of, um, of having a world-class uh, redfish and, um, and lots of people have, have discovered that fact and uh, fishing is another big use. There's probably 350,000 uh, fishermen that come out to the refuge every year. So between those two uses uh, wildlife viewing, wildlife photography, and fishing is our, is our primary use. Manatees are large, gray, walrus-like mammals with broad, flat tails. Manatees move very slowly and are dying off because of deadly encounters with boat propellers. Hundreds of manatees travel south each winter and find refuge in the 10,000-acre motor-free zone of the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. It's the largest warm water concentration of manatees in the United States. Their manatee viewing deck is a great place to see these manatees. 
This secluded space where species as diverse as bald eagles and alligators find safe harbor is not only one of Florida's most brilliant coastal treasures, but one of the richest regions for wildlife in the country. The refuge is a, is, is a very important area because of the, of the different types of habitat we have here in this location. And it's, um, the refuge is an, an important wintering stop for migratory birds. Um, it's an important area for, um, for the, uh, uh, the abundance and variety of endangered and threatened species we have here. Um, lo looking at it on a national level of the, of the about 500 national wildlife refuges that we have, uh, Merritt Island ranks um, about third or fourth in the number of bird species that we have with 310 different species of birds. We are probably first or second or third, somewhere in that range in the, in the number of endangered and threatened species that we have here. So looking at it from that perspective, Merritt Island is one of the more important national wildlife refuges um, in the national wildlife refuge system. And it's right here in central Florida. Right next door to the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge is the brilliantly beautiful Canaveral National Seashore. Here you'll find the longest stretch of undeveloped beach in Florida, 24 miles of natural dune that's simply amazing to see. Just like the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge, the Canaveral National Seashore is owned by NASA, but managed by a different federal agency the National Park Service. Canaveral National Seashore was established in January of 1975. It actually consists of 57,000 acres, 24 miles of beach that start in New Smyrna and go all the way down to Kennedy Space Center. About two thirds of that, maybe 38,000 acres, is out here within the Indian River Lagoon. Here is the longest existing natural dune system on the east coast of Florida. This long stretch of pristine seashore has no seawalls or rock revampments. It looks the same today as it did when only native Indians lived here. These natural dunes are the most stunning feature of the seashore. You'll notice the dunes in Canaveral National Seashore gently slope up from the surf zone. And once you get into the dunes, you'll find the hardy natural vegetation that's helped keep the dunes in place. Sea oats, sea grapes, panic grass, all the natural vegetation that actually holds a dune system together. It's the backbone of the barrier island and you won't see it anywhere else like this. The shoreline, natural sand dunes, and the large area of natural land behind them form the seashore's fragile coastal habitat that provides a home to hundreds of species of native wildlife. On the beach, you'll see a variety of Atlantic shorebirds different times of the year. We have sanderlings, willets, uh, sandpipers, herons, uh, great blue herons, white egrets, and also at different times of the year, you'll see some pelagic birds that come this way. You'll see some gannets, uh, jaegers, things like that. So it's a great bird watching area for shorebirds and for other waterfowl on the lagoon side. Within Canaveral National Seashore, there are lots of opportunities for recreation. We have swimming, surfing, uh, boating within the lagoon. Also kayaking and canoeing is really, really big. This also is one of the world-class fishing areas for sport fishing, redfish, uh, black drum, sea trout, tarpon, things like that. So we get a lot of fishermen, a lot of recreational fishermen. We also will see just beachcombers. A really, really great activity is just to get out and get some exercise on the beach and walk along the surf line and see what you can find. There's seashells out here, sea beans, all kinds of treasures. Providing a home to endangered and threatened wildlife is a major role of the Canaveral National Seashore. Without large tracts of land like this, many animals would become extinct. Canaveral National Seashore does have about 14 endangered or threatened species that either reside in the seashore or pass through here at some point on a migration path. Uh, we are home to about 4,000 sea turtle nests every year. Right now we have just about 1,600 nests in the seashore, loggerhead sea turtles, green sea turtles, leatherback sea turtles, and very rare Kemp's Ridley sea turtle that we have two nests of. 
90% of all sea turtle nesting in the United States takes place in Florida. And with so much of Florida's coastline being developed, these 24 miles of untouched, pristine beach are indispensable sea turtle habitat. With an average of 24 sea turtles coming up on the beach each night during nesting season to lay their eggs, this beach is one of the only remaining safe places rare sea turtles can go. The loggerhead is a threatened species. The green, the leatherback, and the Kemp's Ridley are, both in, are all three endangered species and they all nest here along the seashore. The importance of it is that there is not any development, so it's better for a nesting habitat. There are no lights, there are no people down here at night other than the groups that we bring out in a controlled environment for a turtle watch program. We don't have cars on the beach, we don't have a whole lot of people, even, even on weekend days when we're you know, pretty full with visitors, this, because we have such a large area, it really doesn't have a big impact on the nests. One way the staff at the Canaveral National Seashore motivate people to help sea turtles is through their Sea Turtle Watch program, where everyday citizens get to see what a female sea turtle goes through to lay her eggs. Canaveral National Seashore has been conducting public sea turtle watch programs since about 1988. And basically, we take groups of 30 people out onto the beach to view a nesting sea turtle. The goal of this program is to get groups of visitors out and see something that you really are not going to see anywhere else. When you really get out there and see what the sea turtle goes through to perpetuate her species, it really, really has an impact on people. We start the program with the visitors in the visitor center and a park ranger, and we also have a volunteer scout out on the beach riding an ATV back and forth, trying to locate a turtle that's going to begin nesting. Once the scout does find a loggerhead sea turtle that's nesting, they call back to the group by radio and then we all go out onto the beach and watch her as she finishes her nesting. After she digs the hole, she lays anywhere from 80 to 150 ping pong ball size eggs. And when she's finished laying the eggs, she takes those back flippers and scoop by scoop, she scoops the sand in and pats it down nice and firmly. She's making sure that the eggs stay where they are nice and safe. Then she makes a U-turn and goes back into the ocean. And she may come back in two weeks or three weeks and lay another nest just like that. And as an indexing beach, which Canaveral National Seashore is, we take data on every single sea turtle nest within the seashore. By giving people a special place they can go to enjoy the outdoors while shielding native wildlife from harm, the Canaveral National Seashore is truly one of Florida's most valuable coastal treasures. The National Park Service is in the business of taking care of and protecting things within their boundaries. So for us, you can see, as you look past here, you can see where the development stops and starts. So as soon as you come into Canaveral National Seashore, what you're seeing is old Florida. This is where we can preserve the flora and fauna of old Florida without impacting people's lives, without uh, causing problems between development and wildlife. Florida's coastline is rapidly disappearing. So places like Canaveral National Seashore, I think, are becoming much more important as, as days go by. The Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge and the Canaveral National Seashore are both located on Florida's east coast and are open to the public year-round. The north entrance of the Canaveral National Seashore is located in New Smyrna Beach and accessible via I-95 off Florida 44 and by A1A. The entrance to the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge and the south entrance of the Canaveral National Seashore are located in Titusville, Florida and accessible via US-1, Florida 528, otherwise known as the Beach Line Expressway going north on 407, Route 50 and exit 220 off I-95. An exciting event you won't want to miss held each January in Titusville is the Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival. With some of the country's most popular bird watching locations right here, this is the largest bird watching and wildlife festival in the United States. Birding and wildlife festivals are fun events. They're fun, they make education fun. We have field trips, seminars, workshops, we have educational exhibits, there are bird shows, there's wildlife shows, 
the leaders on our field trips are some of the best birding tour leaders in the entire world. And it's just a great place to come learn and, and have fun. Good place to bring your family. Laura Lee Thompson is the owner of Dixie Crossroads, a popular seafood restaurant located in Titusville. She's an avid conservationist and passionate about preserving the natural lands of Florida's space coast. I started the birding festival because I wanted to educate the business people in Titusville about the economic value of preserved lands. You see, Titusville is surrounded by a quarter of a million acres of land that's in public ownership. And there was a thought in our, in our business community that that was a bad thing because they wouldn't be able to develop those properties and they, they, in their opinion there would never be any benefit from the tax base from those undeveloped properties. And I wanted to prove that there is an economic benefit from lands that haven't been developed. And I felt like a birding and wildlife festival would be a good place to start and start this education process. By promoting the significance of the natural lands of the Space Coast and offering a venue for related businesses, this festival is helping ensure the preservation of local wildlife habitat. There's a lot of people that, that make their living renting kayaks and doing boat tours and offering fun educational events and they have a hard time marketing themselves. So the, the Birding Festival has become an umbrella organization for promotion of the businesses that offer outdoor experiences in this area. And, and year-long promotion of the Wildlife Festival has brought this area to the attention of the nation as a premier destination for wildlife viewing. Sometimes it takes a creative idea like the Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival to enlighten people to the value of undeveloped land. If you educate your residents about natural areas that are found in your area and, you, and they, they grow to um, want to have those kind of areas, even parks and green spaces. Parks and green spaces are a huge attractant for bringing business into a community. They add to a community's quality of life. And a festival like this is a good way to edu educate people in your community about, about what you have, as well as educate visitors about what you have. And that benefits everybody. Not only is the business community benefiting from this festival, the ultimate goal is being achieved, helping local wildlife through education. As a fun educational event, this festival helps wildlife just in that manner. It's educational. And people are not going to be inclined to expend money or energy to try and help preserve something that they know nothing about. So if they come to this event, and they learn about a, 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 new, a new nature area that they've never known existed before that's right in their backyard, or they learn about more about an animal that they had an interest in. That's our goal. The Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge, Canaveral National Seashore, and the Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival are all doing their part to help protect what remains of Florida's natural land for the benefit of people and our wildlife. I think some of the things that people can take away from any national park as well as Canaveral National Seashore is that we do need to protect our surroundings. Our environment, all the ecosystems within it are very important and it is up to us to make sure that they don't degrade and they don't be so taken so far away from how they start out. Come and see for yourself Florida's spectacular wildlife at these two outstanding coastal treasures. Be moved by the wonder of a place where wildlife roam free, free from bulldozers and buildings, free from seawalls and sidewalks, and free to relax and simply be wildlife. Visiting Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge is a great experience. Um, it's, it's, um, if you want to come out and spend a few hours or even a whole day, there is, there's lots to see and do. And I think that for, for families or individuals just wanting to get out and um, escape the confines of um, the urban environment and, uh, and uh, experience some wildlife up close and 
and uh, see an abundance of wildlife, this is a great place to stop. Florida's native plants and animals are extremely unique and the reason millions of people from around the world come to Florida each year to visit and to live. If we don't make a place for our native plants and animals, we stand to lose what makes Florida, Florida. So let's make sure in our effort to be economically strong, we don't lose the things that make us successful in the first place, our unique and extraordinary native plants and animals. I hope you're inspired to do whatever you can where you live to help preserve both large and small tracts of natural land for the benefit of people and most importantly, for the wildlife we love. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Wildlife Matters. To share your feedback about this program or to order a copy of Florida's Coastal Treasures, Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge and Canaveral National Seashore. Plus additional programs in the Wildlife Matters series, please visit our website at www.naturewisetv.org. This program is made possible by the following generous contributors. Wildlife Matters is created and produced by NatureWise Incorporated, dedicated to improving the environment through educational television and video.